I'm Mike Keating, one of the co-founders and CEO of Figure. And Figure was started in 2018 with the idea that we were going to leverage blockchain technology to change how lots of things work in the financial services ecosystem. So thinking about the, the value of blockchain, what it brings to the table, the ability to replace trust with truth, and the ability to allow for bilateral marketplaces really provides a foundation for disruption to a lot of the way that things work in, in financial services. So whether it's exchanges, it's the way we move money, it's the way that custody works, um, you know, blockchain is, is in a position to provide massive disintermediation of traditional rent seeking within the, the financial services mm -hmm. ecosystem. So what Figure has done is we've created a, a blockchain called Provenance that is now fully de uh, decentralized and public. So it's open source. It, it exists out in the in the ether for anyone to use. And then built into that, uh, we have a set of operating businesses. So figure lending, figure payments, figure exchange um, that each are de-risking blockchain use cases specifically um, and providing a path for other financial institutions to adopt the technology and get the same benefits. So the lending business is the most mature um, and that's you know, growing at a relatively good clip across mortgages, HELOCs, personal loans. Uh, we're actually in, in process of doing an acquisition of an incremental company into that business. So there's you know, a, a lot of work happening there. Um, most notably, it's, it's the most developed in, in relation to the blockchain. So we've been originating, financing, securitizing, and selling assets on the blockchain uh, since 2018. Um, so we were the first to leverage the technology for that purpose. We've uh, demonstrated some pretty significant cost savings and benefits. So for example, on our um, securitization that we did in March of 2020, we documented out about 115 basis points of cost savings using blockchain technology. Um, so that's, that's one of the verticals. The payments business is relatively newer. Um, in February of this year, we launched Figure Pay, which is a mobile-based banking application that uses stablecoin to move value between any two counterparties. And we launched that on a pilot in Montana. Um, we're in the process of now launching that to 26 states. Um, and it's effectively a challenger bank application. It's got a Visa debit card associated with it, but it has a unique ability that if any two counterparties in pay transact with each other, rather than using interchange or wire or ACH, it uses a blockchain rail. So massively disruptive in terms of the payments industry. And then finally, the exchange business um, is a combination of our digital fund services platform where we custody and administer funds on blockchain, um, our private company cap table solution platform where we have private companies that manage their cap table and then integrate into an exchange for secondary liquidity um, the exchange business has recently gotten an ATS exemption, alternative trading system exemption from the SEC uh, that allows us to operate in exchange for blockchain securities is one of the one of the only ones that I know of, if not the only one that I know of that, that has that. Um, and that business is, is relatively developed at this point and, and, and obviously continuing to grow. So all these are underpinned on provenance. Provenance uh, is a decentralized public blockchain, as I mentioned earlier. It's, it's built on top of Cosmos Tendermint. It has an underlying token that uh, reflects the, the the gas fees that uh, that one pays to transact on provenance, and that token trades on an active secondary market on provenance. The the basic premise behind blockchain, as I mentioned earlier, is you're you're displacing trust with truth. So what that means is, when I originate an asset on the blockchain, all the underlying information that's contributed into that asset, whether it's property, title, credit, it's being digitally signed by the source of that information. And so I don't have to do any attestation. This is a real FICO score. Or this is a real income number. Or this is a real property value because uh, effectively the, the provider of that information is signing an attestation uh, or, or attesting to the, the validity of that information. And then what I'm doing is basically uh, have a smart contract that represents my underwriting box and it's producing the exception reports. It's underwriting the asset. It's saying, did I do what I said I would do with this? And so the, the importance and the relevance of this is that when you look at that asset, you know that it is what it's being represented as. If it's a debt to income number or a loan to value number or a FICO number, you're not having to distrust it and audit it. Meaning that when I look at it, I know what it is. And this becomes especially powerful when you bring this into a bilateral real-time marketplace, because then I can face off directly to the seller of that asset, irrespective of who they are, 
and I can transact riskless with them. So there's no counterparty or settlement risk on blockchain. Effectively, if you're selling $50 million of loans, I get $50 million of stable coin. The blockchain registers the stable coin to you, the loans to me. There's no settlement process or settlement uh, risk. And so therefore the combination of me having certainty and perfection as to what you're selling and the ability to transact without settlement risk reduces a ton of cost. So if you think about it from the lending standpoint, originating the asset, the amount of audit and QC expenses that you have are smaller, selling or pledging the asset into a warehouse, infinitely more efficient and easier, securitizing the asset, you're eliminating a lot of the third parties like custody bank and payee agent and so forth. And then the blockchain is a real-time remittance platform. So when people pay, you're getting real-time visibility as the performance of that asset. And so consequently, you have better liquidity because people can see the actual performance of the asset 24-7. There's two dimensions of competitors. So within the blockchain construct, provenance really competes with Ethereum. And that's, you know, Ethereum's established itself as, as you know, the largest DeFi platform and provenance is aspiring to be an even larger DeFi platform. And, and Provenance has some things to its advantage versus Ethereum in that it's cheaper to transact on Provenance. It's faster to transact. It's got a robust ecosystem of banks and buy side firms that are already on it, engaged on it. Um, so, but, but, you know, essentially our view is that ultimately Provenance will displace Ethereum, become the, the dominant DeFi platform. Within the figure businesses, we compete with, with all kinds of people. So our lending business competes with all the lenders. Our payments business competes with Visa and MasterCard. Our exchange business complete, competes with you know everyone from uh, NICE or I, ICE and NASDAQ to NHKX to you know some of the private market exchanges. So it's, it's a whole set of operating business competition. Our vision is that Provenance is bigger than Ethereum on a market cap basis in terms of a DeFi platform. So I think what, what will happen with figure is you'll see each of those businesses mature and, and effectively um, divest out. So the lending business will go public, the payments business will go public, the exchange business will go public. Um, and, and yeah, effectively it'll break apart into three pieces. Hopefully each one of those is valuable, but also you know, the more important driver is our, our real expectation is that Provenance will be worth more than Ethereum in five to 10 years.